Hello everyone, my name is Jose Delgado, I'm a Corporate Commercial Attorney. Today we are going to be addressing a query that is often uh, asked by landlords, specifically in, uh, in light of the Consumer Protection Act, which is not so new anymore, but there are some very, very dramatic changes that have come into our law based on this piece of legislation, which many landlords are oblivious to, blissfully oblivious to, unfortunately. So the law has changed in that uh, it's given consumers quite a number of rights that landlords are uh, unaware of. The Consumer Protection Act does govern rental contracts. So the provision of accommodation, even just the provision of accommodation is seen as a service. So having a tenant with a rental contract or an arrangement clearly falls within the ambit of the Act. So this will give the tenant rights in certain instances that you need to be aware of as a landlord. Tenant can cancel the lease if they give you 20 days notice. Of course, as a landlord, you're entitled to uh, get some compensation for damages for the early termination of the contract. Uh, that said, you can't just sit back and claim as much as you like. There is a principle in our law called the mitigation of damages principle. So you've got to go and attempt to get a new tenant uh, and not on sort of crazy terms that uh, you will then try and justify uh, holding the tenant liable. So all, all, all in balance. You'll go out, get a tenant, uh, the person who's given you early notification, they will then be um, liable to you for damages, which you'll have to calculate and obviously recover from them. Uh, hopefully you'll have a deposit that is sufficient. If you don't, you may have to bring legal action to um, restore the premises, to get your damages for the early uh, cancellation, etc. A major issue for you to consider as a landlord is uh, Section 61 of the Act, which deals with strict liability. Uh, in the past, before the introduction of this piece of legislation, uh, it's somebody that have to prove negligence on your part as a landlord in order to claim damages for you, from you. The new act says that the provision of goods or services, which uh, rental, renting of accommodation is, uh, basically the fact that you've provided the rental space or the premises will make you liable whether you're negligent or not. So in the past, uh, your tenant, if they were injured or suffered some form of damages, they'd have to bring an action and show that you're negligent to be successful in a claim. That's gone out the window. You're in a position now where, under the strict liability principle, any damages can now be, uh, you can be sued for any type of damages, which can be huge, specifically if there's uh, injuries or possibly uh, improbable death or, or something to that effect. So it can, be, um, it can be quite a huge claim you may be facing. To secure yourself, of course, you'd be prudent and take insurance, but the uh, insurance doesn't always pay out. There could be repudiation events, there could be scenarios on your part that uh, will render you liable, so be very cautious. All right, so as a landlord, we strongly advise that in your lease agreement, whether you're doing it yourself or whether you're getting uh, an agent or a managing person to handle that, ensure that you have your lease drawn up in plain, simple English, you can indemnify yourself. The law, however, says that you've got to be very specific in informing the tenant of exactly what they're indemnifying you from or them from. All right? So you've got to ensure that that is very clear and it sets out what the tenant is indemnifying you from. So gone are the old uh, blanket indemnity um, clauses that just says whatsoever, howsoever, from whatever cause arise, and you've got to be much more specific now. So just ensure that your indemnity is as comprehensive as possible that may come to your aid in the event that there is a claim.